hello okay so um yeah i'm back i haven't made a video in a really long time um but this one was very important to me someone in my zine club named frenchie asked me if i could get tips uh give tips on how to not obsess over sharing your work and just put your zines out there i literally just made a little post-it note of some of the things that i do to help give insight but just like a disclaimer this is not like a one size fits all it's just what i do i'm not an expert i don't want you to think that i'm an expert or anything i'm just obsessed with making zines and um, I do deal with the whole self-doubt thing too, so I think it's really important to talk about. So the first thing I want to say before I get into it is that it's okay to be scared. It's superhuman to be afraid of putting your art out there because what if you get a bunch of criticism that you don't really want to hear? What if people make fun of you? I get it. So normal. So just let yourself feel it. Let the self-doubt come in, but just be aware of it, you know? Don't let it consume you. Just acknowledge that the thoughts are there and just be like, okay, I'm feeling a bit scared and then share it anyway. You know, that's what I do. I get very, very nervous to share my work, but I just kind of like let my body feel it while my mind is telling myself other things. Like before I post something that I worked really hard on and I'm kind of self-conscious if people will like it, my butthole literally puckers up and I do involuntary kegels because of the nervousness, like my body's reacting. But in my head, I'm just like, okay, whatever happens, I'll be okay. Just trust yourself that you'll be okay, whether it's good or it's bad. It may be uncomfortable, but you'll be okay. I want you to know it's okay to feel scared. It's okay to be doubtful. I feel like that sometimes too. Um, I don't want you to try to fight your feelings or ignore your feelings. You should definitely definitely acknowledge them because that's the best way to work through them, right? Okay, so my first step is just make shitty zines. Just make a shitty zine. Give yourself permission to make shitty work. I do that a lot. I, I actually have an example of a zine I was working on for 12 hours. I knew it was going to be bad because I didn't know how to really start with it. I had all these ideas for it, but just really didn't know how to execute it. And instead of being in my head like, oh, I don't know how to execute it. I don't know how to make this happen. I don't know how my to make my idea come to life. I was just like sitting with my feelings. I was like, okay, I'm scared of how this is going to turn out. But should I be scared and sit here worrying about how it's going to turn out? Or should I just get started and get one step closer to it maybe working? I got started did not get closer to it working. It, it hasn't worked, but look at how shitty this is. Okay, so the idea I had behind this is, this is based on a Nicolas Cage movie called Wicker Man. And in the movie, it's so stupid, but he gets this sort of punishment where he gets a cage of bees locked around his head. And he's like, no, not the bees. And I thought it would be cool to make a zine that had him getting stung by all the bees but that it was in this clear little like thingy i don't even know how to explain it see like i just feel so un inarticulate but i had it in this little clear thing trying to figure out how to make the bees in this clear thingy move around when you shake it and um it took me 12 hours to just not even get it right it doesn't even move the way i want it to it looks really funky if you look closer at the the fold I had to put like foam in the middle to try to space out the plastic enough so the bees can move around it was all trial and error and I have to be okay with that the amount of time I'm about to spend on this is not wasted time even though it's gonna be shitty because I'm getting closer to learning how to make this type of zine or maybe I just maybe I don't revisit this I honestly don't feel like I'm going to revisit this but it wasn't wasted time because it was still time using my hands, being creative. And while I was doing this, I had an idea for a different Nick Cage zine altogether. So give yourself permission to make bad art. That way you'll be easier on yourself and you'll just start creating. You'll just make stuff. And you're like, you know what? This might be shit, but at least I'm making something. And the more that you make shit, or not literal shit, but the more that you make art, the closer you get to making the zine that you really, really love. Making zines really should be more about yourself. I know another thing that's easier said than done, but just if you make zines for yourself and you're just having fun, like I was having fun making this. I knew it wasn't gonna turn out right. And not in a self-defeating way, it's just I had a feeling that it would just not work out, but I had fun doing it. And it was for me, like no one, I didn't have to share this with anyone. So I just got started making it and it inspired me to make even more zines. So give yourself to permission to make shitty zines. Also, tying into that, try to remember to separate your self-worth from your art. 
I know it's very hard because your art is like an extension of you and it's such an expression of who you are and your innermost thoughts and your feelings and it's very vulnerable, but you have to be able to look at your zines objectively and just put it out there and be like, you know what? However people respond to this is not really a reflection on my self-worth. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It's just everybody's different. Everybody likes different things. So if you put yourself too closely to your art, you'll never make art, you know? Because you'll be so afraid that whatever reception or criticism you get about your zines will be a direct reflection of you and your essence and who you are. And that's not true. It's like the same way that I fix my hair, you know? Like put green in it, dye it. Um, if someone was like, I hate your green hair, I'm not gonna be like, oh, well they hate me. I'll just be like, okay, maybe they don't like the color green. Maybe they don't like, uh, I don't know, streaks of color in people's hair for whatever reason, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's separate from who I am inside and what I feel about myself. And that goes into the next thing, is to build a strong self-concept within yourself, because when you do that, you'll be able to knock away whatever anybody says. You know, if someone says that your art is shitty, but you really believe in yourself and you have a good self-concept of who you are and you accept yourself, nothing they say will matter. It won't. It really won't. I mean, it may bug you and maybe it will hurt your feelings, but it's not like you'll dwell on it, you know? So, I, I, this seems pretty deep for art, but I think it's super important to work on your self-concept and build up a good self-belief in general. When I did that, it definitely helped with my zines, but it also helped me become a better person overall. So there's three books that I recommend for self-concept in general and as an artist that I think will really, really help you with that fear of perfectionism and getting it right and just getting started. You know, there's this really great quote that I like and it says, you don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. And if you think that you're worth that, you're worth figuring out if your work is gonna be like the next big thing or even just something that you do for yourself. You know, you'll never know unless you try it and you're worth that, but you have to believe that in yourself. There's only so much I can tell you and hype you up to get you to believe that. You have to believe it in here. No one can give that to you. So there's three books that I'm gonna recommend that you read. One is called Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Waltz. That's a general self-concept book that helps you Act as if you're the person you already wanna be. Right now, you're probably a person that's anxious about sharing your zines, you're a little self-conscious and a little doubtful. Perfectly normal and okay. But this book will help you transform your thoughts into basically gaslighting yourself into being the type of person that is confident in sharing their zines and believes that everybody's gonna love what they have to put out and share with the world and just acting as if you're already this person that makes kick-ass zines. And the book is not about zines, it's just about your self-concept and the way that you think in general, but it'll really help you if you take it to heart and you really do the practices in the book, it'll help you transform your thoughts into being the person that you've always dreamt of being. Just acting as if you're already that person. It'll help with your self-confidence and your belief in yourself, and that will transform into your zines. It's a big investment, I know. It's not just like a band-aid, one-size-fits-all, like, hey, do this and you'll, you'll get over your fear of putting your zines out there. It's kind of an investment, but I think it's so worth it, and it's just a tip that I would share because I love that book and it helped me immensely in sharing my work. Another book I wanna recommend is called The War of Art. Forget the author's name, but I will figure it out and I'll put it in the description. And this book is um, basically about the other book, self-concept, but specifically with your art. So it talks about how you build up this resistance in your mind, which is something that you need to be aware of. Like I said before, be aware of your negative thoughts and your self-doubt, but just kind of like observe it as an outside party. Notice that it's there, acknowledge that you're scared, and then just go through with deciding to share your work anyway. If you have a hard time doing that, this book will really give you a better insight on what that resistance is, what that thing inside of you that is afraid of putting their work out there because it's not good enough yet or you're a perfectionist, this will give you better insight into that. The War of Art will totally transform the way that you view your work because it did help me. And it helped me realize that that resistance inside of me is not really me. It's like something within some subconscious belief that I've held from a very young age that wants me to hold back because it's safer. And I would really encourage you to not play it safe. 
try to push yourself out of your comfort zone because the more that you do that, the more you'll be comfortable with the discomfort and then you'll just make so many zines. You won't even care about the reception that you're getting because you'll just be so used to like, you'll create this habit of just making so much work and sharing it that you'll be able to deal with whatever the consequences are. Whether people love it, whether people hate it, whether you like it, whether you hate it, you'll notice, oh, I survived that. That was uncomfortable, but I survived. So The War of Art, amazing, amazing book. And the last one, I actually have to go get it. I haven't read it completely yet, but I just bought this book and I heard it's really good for your art. Let me go get it. Okay, I found it. It's called Art and Fear, Observations on the Perils and Rewards of Art Making. And this book is by David Bales and Ted Orland. And this book basically explores all the ways that you let fear get in the way of you and your art. It's holding you back. The fear of being perfect, the fear of getting it good, the fear of having the right idea is really holding you back from making amazing art. Not only for an audience, but for yourself. You deserve to make art and you deserve to explore the joys of art making and being creative. And this book, so far what I've read, is super helpful in changing your perspective in being your own worst enemy, you know? There's a lot of times where we think we're gonna get a lot of negative criticism, we're gonna get a lot of hate comments, but the biggest hater I think that we all have as artists is ourselves. We stop ourselves before we even try. We stop, we, we take ourselves out of the race before we even get to the finish line. And it's like, why, why do we do that? This book, kind of goes into the psychology of why we do that and how to overcome it. So I highly recommend, haven't finished it yet, but so far so good. Back of it says, these are questions that matter, questions that recur at each stage of artistic development. And they are the source of for this volume of wonderfully incisive commentary. Art and Fear explores the way art gets made, the reason it often doesn't get made, and the nature of the difficulties that causes so many artists to give up along the way. I think that's already pretty insightful and pretty powerful, so I highly recommend. Um, another huge thing, this is the last thing I'll say too. If you are obsessing about putting your work out there or even just getting started and making your zine, I would highly suggest starting small. Make something very bare bones. Almost like how I said, make the shitty zine. Give yourself permission to make the shitty zine. Give yourself permission to make a rough draft even. I think we all get caught up in our head of making it this perfect final product before it's done. But if you're familiar with my zines and you've seen any of my work on Instagram with the flexagons and the interactive paper engineering, those take days, weeks even for me to make. And there are so many f versions. I don't wanna, I don't wanna say, I don't wanna curse, but I have so many trashed zines which are the same version of the of a final zine that I make, but it goes through this evolution process where I start on it, I think it's gonna go one way, and then throughout the week, as I work on it, it changes, it develops, I trash some things, I include some things, I change the number of pages completely, I change the theme completely. It has this growth process, like we do as humans, you know? Every day you could choose to be a new person, you could think a different way, you can make new choices. And that's how I like to think about zines. You have to start small. Start with a rough draft, start with just, you know, you marking down your ideas, don't put all this pressure on yourself to make it perfect. Just know that when you start and start working on this zine and let it evolve over time, it'll become something really great. It'll become something that you're proud of. And if not, and it becomes one of these and it's a piece of shit, that's okay too. It's not wasted time. At least, I mean, I don't want to sound all hippy dippy, but I really don't believe it's a waste of time because that's the creative journey, right? It's all about exploration, experimentation, and starting over. You can work on something for years even, and then once it's done, you hate it, or it doesn't accurately represent what you initially wanted it to symbolize, and you have to scrap it and start over and start anew. So I would really suggest starting small, letting it grow, and then sharing it with a community that you trust. So if you have a best friend, you can show them your zine, ask them what they think about it, because that way it's a trustworthy source and you don't have to be afraid of them totally hurting your feelings and crushing you. I would hope that they would know how to delicately give you critique and criticism, um, constructive criticism too. Um, you can share it with the zine community online. You can follow the zine hashtags on Instagram and TikTok. 
um, usually they're pretty helpful and the community is very friendly. Or if you don't have anybody that you trust with your work, you can send it to me. You can send it to my PO box, which I'll also link in the description, or you can email me a copy. We can trade. If you want feedback, I will give you honest feedback. You know, I really, really enjoy reading people's zines. I think it's a great way to express yourself and explore your identity and who you want to be. So never feel afraid to share your art. And if you are, because I know that that's very normal, a very normal feeling and it's easier said than done to just be like, don't be scared. You can share it with me. Those are all the tips that I have. I just wanted to answer Frenchie in a way that was um, more in depth and genuine. Try not to obsess about getting started and just get started. You can't make something amazing unless you start. And a lot of stuff won't be amazing and you have to give yourself permission to grow and to lean into that uncomfortableness of getting started so that's i winded myself talking about this i get so excited talking about zines um really hope that was helpful if you have any tips um, please leave them in the comment section let me know um, what you think i'll be back sometime soon with a new video i want to do a zine tour next and then also the history of zines which was requested by someone named eli who has been waiting very patiently for me to make that video but um that's all i have for now i just wanted to say that go go make zines happy zine making and happy new year